Absolutely. So the most, we did a lot of fun things, but I guess the most exciting thing we did was we started a Pi Day tradition at my university. We got, ended up raising about $800 as we um, had students vote for which professor they wanted to be pied. And we ended up pieing the dean of our entire college and about five or six different professors. And I ended up also getting pied by my very own VP. And that was lots of excitement and ended up turning into a tradition that will be continuing with three different colleges of um, Chico State. I go to Chico State. Three, uh, there's like 10 different colleges on campus and three of them are actually going to be participating in Pi Day of next year. So hopefully our goal is to get the president involved one day. If I had to pick one, I'd say we got the opportunity to polish the um, Tau Beta Pi monument. So there was a there was a bent polishing shortage. Um, so we weren't able to receive individual bents, but we actually got to polish the actual monument on campus. Um, and being able to leverage, you know, engineering um, knowledge around how to polish brass and um, just being able to do that for the for the for the for the campus was super exciting because I think it it, it now glows rather than is more green um, so I, I think that was something that was that was new and exciting we also polished our bands I won't describe that but uh, we had a, ours was the first time in 20 years that it had been polished it maybe more that was our advisor's been here for 20 years and he said it had never been polished in that time. Um, but anyway, I think the one event that I would choose is at the beginning of the first semester, we did a get together barbecue. Um, and I thought that event was really cool because it brought together a lot of people who, a lot of members who like they said that they'd been initiated into the Tau Beta Pi and then COVID, they'd like felt out of touch. Uh, but it was a really good event to get them like back into Tau Beta Pi. Um, and then after that event, a few of them like started coming back to other events. So that was really cool to see. But it was a good event with like free food and like volleyball. And a lot of people were just like there talking and socializing. So it was a fun event. Or I think one of the best things that could have that the one of the most exciting things that we've done is really go back in person and start doing things in person. And I think that's, you know, COVID was great. We got the experience of like online, virtual, whatever, however you want to take that. Um, but now we finally kind of moved into sort of this hybrid and, you know, more doing things, getting to meet people um, in real life, not just those faces floating on a screen. And that has been, I think, a game changer for how our candidates view us, uh, for marketing in general um, of, you know, bringing people into this awesome organization. So uh, that's definitely been a really fun thing, getting to see candidates and members mingling in person after so long. It's been wonderful. So mine kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, a lot of, uh, so I worked in District 15. Um, so the beginning of last semester, I was the only initiated Tau Beta Pi member on my campus. Everyone else graduated and after COVID, uh, the officer transition didn't work out very well. The past president just decided not to nominate anybody and train anybody. So it just ended up coming completely dormant. And then about two weeks in, uh, my our associate chair came up to me and goes, hey, you're the last initiate on campus. We don't want to lose this amazing organization. So by myself, that cement fall, this last fall, I initiated 22 people. And then this upcoming semester with about six other people, I was able to initiate 22 more people. And so I, within a single year, I have grown our chapter by about 40 people, and which is even more exciting because now we're starting a NEST project, we're starting a mentorship programming, we're also starting, um, what, uh, we have a lot of socials happening, we're doing a symposium of research with our entire college of different majors and whatnot for different honor societies we'll be hosting um, different uh, PE, like uh, trainings for mechanical and electrical and whatnot. So it's been lots of successes, lots of pitfalls trying to figure out how to organize everything again. But overall, just reactivating our chapter again has been maybe cry a couple times. <laughs> Shelby, I'll, I'll follow up after you just because I feel like it's a, a similar journey that maybe many Tau Beta Pi chapters have gone. Um, obviously, being at Penn State, we have a, a much larger campus. Um, but again, coming after COVID, the, the previous executive board was 
um, unfortunately not, you know, communicative with um, how to run the chapter. So the first, the fall semester, um, we initiated 43, which was exciting um, because it was just three executive board members. Um, and then in the, in the spring, which is typically a down semester, we were able to grow our executive board to 11. So going from three to 11 was, it was a great success. Um, and I think that just, I think that just um, catalyzed the candidates in terms of seeing the number of people on the executive board, seeing, you know, what we were building um, in, in the spring, which again, for us at least is a, is, is a down semester traditionally. We were able to initiate um, 72 um, and we're, we have, we had a couple conflicts. So we're hoping to get it to like 77, 78 with a makeup initiation. My chapter, I guess was not, it was in like an okay place during COVID. So we had, I was going to say our initiate members were what I was most proud of, but after those, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, so I guess what I'll go with is we hosted an in-person district conference this semester. Uh, and it, the organization of it was really good and it was really exciting to like be in person with people outside of my chapter for the first time in a while. Um, and just like sh learning about other chapters, um, learning kind of the activities that they do, getting to talk with people um, from other chapters. For me, uh, this was a just going into it, it was just basically being thrown into the lion's den. I, when I was initiated right for COVID, I knew literally nothing about how to apply. Um, and when I, my second week in, I had to do a lot of research. The president's handbook actually ended up being really helpful and be able to read it and understand like what was going on. And if it wasn't for my district directors being as helpful and as available as they were, I wouldn't have been able to got so far as um, possible. We only have an initiative pool of about 100 people, if even. Um, and the district directors really helped me. So utilize them as your resources. If I would have known how helpful they, like how helpful and how willing the headquarters and head district directors would be, they are amazing resource. Um, and I think if I would have known that about a month before my initiation, it would have gone a lot smoother. Um, and also been a little bit more helpful in regards to organizing the chapter. It's the beginning of this semester when I actually had an officer board. It was a little bit of like push and pull, like what works, what doesn't work. So just know that mistakes in organization, it's going to happen. Like sometimes what works for my chapter isn't going to work for other chapters, as some chapters are a couple hundred and some chapters are maybe 10 to 20. And, you know, that's and that's OK. You can't compare those numbers. It's just like comparing apples and oranges. But just know that your whatever works for your chapter, keep working on it. And if you want to change some things that doesn't work, oh well, it happens. I think leaning on nationals, um, nationals isn't scary. They're they're not scary. They're they're friendly. They're here to help you guys. As a president, um, where I feel like a, a lot of people might be coming in the same role as as um, you know, not getting too much support from the previous executive board, especially since they went through COVID and, and kind of revamping. Um, personally, I leaned a lot on Alex Cross, um, and he was he was really instrumental in, in terms of our success. Always, always there for a phone call the next day, um, and, and I, I think that was important. Um, thinking about what we had to learn the hard way, um, this might this might be more preached toward bigger chapters, um, but kind of thinking about that same circle, and it's it's tough because I don't know how to even complete the circle. Um, but even, I think the more people that you can have on the executive board, um, can only bring to better things. Since my chapter wasn't, it was like in a pretty stable spot at the beginning of the year, I don't have a ton to say on this, but I will say since like my chapter is like in a stable spot, we kind of like have things rolling. Um, but even with that we like messed up our eligibility list got messed up last semester um there was a new person so i don't know if everyone in the audience knows this like at the beginning of the semester someone 
in the College of Engineering probably will like pull an eligibility list for you. Depending on your chapter, like you'll get the list or they'll send out invites. Um, but anyway, we had a new person in charge of doing that and they messed up the list. So we only got like a fraction of the people invited who should have been invited. Um, so like, even though we knew what they were, what we were doing, that person didn't know what they were doing yet. Um, and better communication with them would have helped that um, and would have helped us get everyone invited that we needed to. So even if you've, you're at a spot where like things are going well, um, you still need to be diligent about those little details, especially getting the eligibility list because like that can go wrong very easily. And it pains me to say this because <laughs> I, I have seen I have seen such sad things this year. <laughs> but we, as a child, and like this goes for everybody, and it's something I used to think and say as a president too back in the day. But faster and easier does not equal best. So if you have a process where you know the people before you have probably perfected because things went wrong um, and they put something into place for you and um or you like came up with it and then you handing it you're handing it off to somebody explain the why behind why that process is in place and why you're doing things the way you're doing them because chances are if the next person after you doesn't know what that is they're going to look at that and go, this is cumbersome. This is a lot of work. I don't know why we're doing this. It's a waste of time. Get rid of it and replace it with something new. And sometimes something new isn't a good idea when you've spent, you know, the last five, six years trying to perfect something. Right? <laughs> so don't rush through like, and this works for new things too. Like something, doing something quicker, doing something the easy way out, like don't take shortcuts. Uh, really think about like the long-term impacts that it'll have on your chapter, the long-term uh, viability that that idea has. Because it's something I have also experienced where I was president of a chapter. Um, we put into place a lot of things that I thought made us special. Um, like for example, like a really small one um, for our general meetings, we would assign two officers to each meeting to get the food and we wanted to stand out. So we didn't buy pizza ever. We didn't buy anything. It would always be something that was baked or cooked or whatever by those two officers. Um, in a couple of cases, there was something special, like one of them, his mom was a baker, so we bought from them. But like we tried to make it special each time. And then as the you know time went by, I became an advisor. I was no longer involved. And it was kind of sad to watch. I know exactly the feeling Kavya is describing because they would start chipping away at these traditions that we had established. Um, in the name of convenience. So even though like the number of officers had gone up, they didn't want to waste the or waste the time on the food. So they just bought pizza instead. And then they became like any other club on campus and lose that charm. That happened on like, you know, 10 different things that made the chapter special before. So as time went on, a lot of these traditions got lost and suddenly they had to restart rebuilding from scratch which was exactly where I had been when I had like started making these things. So definitely a frustration there. So I totally agree with her. Definitely when, when you're passing things off to future generations of your chapter, make sure you explain why you do something and not, you know, you know, hopefully steer them away from just trying to make things more convenient. Cause like Kavya said, better and fast or faster doesn't make better, more convenient doesn't necessarily make better, uh, better makes better at the end of the day. Don't treat it like a task. Yeah. Tasks are tasks are bad. <laughs> I mean, with, tasks can be yeah. good, but <laughs> with with one exception, if you're making things more convenient because you have fewer officers or something, that's totally different. That's like, a different you're story. Doing, you're doing what you have to do, um, but if you have found something that works especially well for your chapter, don't throw it away. The, the second thing that we did was just leveraging the posters, re, re, revamping the poster. We, we, we created 10 poster kits that had the four posters, the brochures, um, the wallets that could hold um, those brochures, the, book, the bookmarks, and we placed it in every college um, that and I, I, I assigned it to every executive board member and chair. Um, so we were able to place uh, 10 
you know, full kits with posters and brochures and wallets and bookmarks, just to again reestablish that presence on campus. Um, but we created merch, and again, merch is something that again just establishes brand presence. Um, and we provided it to our candidates and our members at, a, at the exact cost, right? I think it was sixteen twenty-five per shirt. And we weren't looking to make profit off of it. We weren't looking to boost, you know, chapter financials. We saw it as an opportunity, we can create a cool t-shirt and every person that wears that cool t-shirt will be able to be preached how beta pi if they wear it, you know, on a Tuesday, you know, every, whoever wears it on a Tuesday will be able to, you know, wear tau beta pi and people will be able to think of, oh, what is that? And we, we decided to send out physical invites to um, every potential member. Um, and as I've mentioned earlier, that was, you know, upwards of 800 people. So that, that when you think about you know, return address labels and, and stamps that actually incurred a $600 cost to our chapter, which again, it, it is a big expense. And we were fortunate enough to have those funds, you know, available. But I do believe that being able to go that extra mile um, was was the reason that um, we, we initiated 72 in the spring. And from a smaller perspective um, and a smaller chapter, we did a lot of coordinating with the other like clubs on campus. We had a bowling tournament with a couple of our SE teams on campus. We're also looking into um, doing PE training uh, for your special engineering, your FE test with other honor societies on campus because we have such a small populace. Um, we, only have, we only offer five engineering um, majors on our campus. And so we compete with a lot of other smaller honor societies, but instead of trying to fight them, we were actually just trying to join forces together and then put on different events with all of one of us. So if you're a part of a small or big school, I highly encourage you and your chapters to work with other clubs on campus and just not make yourself like exclusive to people. And that way you could also include freshmen and sophomores in there instead of just being exclusive to juniors and seniors. My chapter does uh, presentations at freshman and sophomore orientation, uh, well, freshman and transfer orientation. So that way we get transfer students who a lot of them are sophomores, also juniors, seniors, whatever you want to uh, call there, and then freshmen. And so what this allows us to do is sort of get our name out there. So it lets us talk about Tabby to Pie and like all the awesome things we do, all the cool events we put on, uh, how much fun it is. You know, we get officers to come out and talk about it and share their experience. And in the meantime, like at the end, even if it, even if the statement at the very end is like, oh, but you have to be a junior or senior to, um, you know, to be part of the org, we get so many people that are like, do go through the process and become juniors and seniors with like a great GPA. And they come and they say, you know, I've been waiting to join Tau Beta Pi. Like you guys came to my freshman orientation or my transfer orientation. And I was so excited and so motivated. I kept my grades up so I could be part of this society. And like hearing that is the greatest thing in the world. Um, and I'd highly recommend it. Going to going to orientations really does the trick if you can get your, um, you know, get your org in there along with, you know, all the racing and uh, all the other cool, you know, engineering orgs on campus. So also for what it's worth, I, I know we covered uh, flyers, mailing letters, which is huge, really important. Um, and uh, Tau Bait Tuesday, which is the little t-shirt, we did that too. Um, one other thing I wanted to quickly mention is we do phone calls as a way of um, recruiting and not everyone gets the opportunity to do that, but our school along with our eligibility list provides us with phone numbers for students. So that gave us the sort of anything that gives you like a one-on-one -on -one contact, uh, you know, word of mouth is like the best way to preach about Tau Beta Pi. Uh, so if you can do something that's a lot more personable, you'll get better results, generally speaking. And before this year, my chapter at Illinois Alpha did not attend. It's called Quad Day here, like a big campus club fair. Uh, we had not attended it because we were, you know, I asked, like, why don't we do this? And they're like, well, it's awkward. Like, you know, you, people aren't eligible. Like, what are we doing there? I was like, no, we should try it. Like, let's go. Um, so we went and we actually got, I know it worked for at least one person to from it. Somebody told me that they attended and that's why they joined Tell Me to Pie. Um, and I think because it's not just freshmen and sophomores who attend like that kind of event, 
especially this past year, because the last year was online, so people hadn't joined things. Um, but even in a normal year, I know as an undergrad, I would walk around like the campus fair even as like a junior. Um, so I think it might, like it feels awkward to go to this and say, oh, you're not eligible, or you know, you have to be this X, Y, Z. Um, but you do, you will get a few people who either they're freshmen and like Kavi was saying, they'll be super excited to join when they are eligible, or maybe they're already eligible and they're just, you know, walking around. Um, so I would say even, even though it feels awkward, go anyway. And we had like candy on the table. So if they get there and they're like, oh man, then at least they walk away with candy, you know? It was the uh, same thing, like going in, hand so what we actually did is we hand delivered our letters to classes because we are a smaller chapter, we're able to do that. And so we split up um, about like 25 letters per officer. And then we went to different classes, we had to different majors. And then we did a little presentation saying like, so tell me to pie people, we did this. And the one thing is what's really special about, Ch about Chico is we have this thing called Choose Chico and also um, Preview Day. And throughout those, even though they're incoming freshmen and geared toward freshmen type of events, we are not really tabling, but we're actually helping organize the entire event. So we make sure we show up with our pins and our polos and we're just helping and people are gonna naturally ask, oh, what is this that you do? And like, oh, well, we don't really say like, oh, you're ineligible. We just talk about, oh, well, we're the Engineering Honor Society. And it really helps, especially if you're at a small school, really talking about it, but more so not in the fact of like negative, it's only exclusive, like inclusive to people, but just being very open of like, yeah, we have these great things going on and we're really excited. And then when they do ask, well, how do I join? That's when you say, well, it's based off a relative GPA. So it's really about in the small school senses, just getting that word of mouth. As we all know, small town gossip gets around. Very also very true when it comes to a small school. I think there is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, holding events that are open to the public and um, you know, often like service uh, oriented. So Rose mentioned um, bringing therapy dogs out and a therapy alpaca to campus. That sounds awesome. Um, for me, we did a lot of uh, professional development types events like panels and stuff like that, alumni panels. We did a graduating senior panel where it's like graduating seniors talking about what they wish they had done differently and stuff like that. Um, and people will see you doing that. They'll see that you're doing actual meaningful work and they'll be drawn closer to you and you will get people from it. One of the biggest thing is I uh, was events that not only tailored to initiation, but also having events that were outside. Like we had, what we did was we required three mini socials, which included like ice cream social. It also included um, like game night or, and then we also had things called major events where we helped out with other clubs and their big events that they're hosting or even hosting like one of ours, like I just mentioned, we had a bowling tournament. So having stuff that's kind of outside of engineering, but also inside of engineering really helped keep us engagement after by also mentioning like during as we are with each other, the networking of, well, if you do this, you can have this. So really stressing what you'll get out of it. First thing we did was just, especially in an executive board that that was at three at one point was just levering, leveraging um, events that were almost already intact made it a lot easier. Um, on our executive board. So being able to leverage things like we have an on-site nuclear reactor facility, that, that's really cool. And you have to reach out in order to um, tour that. So being able to just leverage on-campus things um, that are almost exclusive, allow you know, greater member um, membership growth. Something that we leveraged um, was leveraging honor courts um, once again, using the Tau Beta Pi Shopify, um, they provide honor cords that Penn State is able to, that Penn State graduates are able to wear during graduation. Um, so keeping some sort of bar, whether that's one or two events that members are required to attend um, in order to be able to purchase a honor cord um, is something we leveraged as well. Um, how do you say this? Like recurring events. We had meetings every other week. And the value of that is that people really saw the same faces all the time. 
Um, since Illinois Alpha is a really big chapter, so we can have a lot of events, but you might not necessarily see the same person at all the events. Um, so really in the initiate phase, especially making sure that people make friends and get to know other people. So then they'll go to Tau Beta Pi events because they want to see their Tau Beta Pi friends. Members become inactive when members don't feel involved. They don't feel like their opinion is valued or their input is valued. Uh, they don't feel like Tau Beta Pi is giving them an opportunity to be involved, or they feel like they want to be involved, but the only way they can be is they're an officer. Um, so the way to counteract these things, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But one of the easiest solutions that I found at my chapter was we were like, well, why don't we just get members involved in chapter things? And so we started committees. And when you start committees, committees are open to members. Committees are open to candidates. Committees are a way that regular like members who aren't officers can be sort of part of the officer team and be in a situation where they're making active decisions for the chapter. They feel like they can do activities that support the chapter. And when they feel like their work is, you know, valued and their input is valued, they keep coming back. Cause then they, like Annie said, they see those same faces, they see people, they get, you know, their friends are coming, their friends are part of, you know, whatever they're doing, whether it's running an event or, you know, uh, being part of a committee and they want to do those same things. So if you can get like, le especially for small chapters, leverage your membership if you don't have the officers to do so. Which is, um, it really matters what happens at the events. You really want them to be interactive as much as possible, as much as is realistic. Um, for me, when I was president, what I would try to do is I would try to make sure that there was going to be an officer at each event or meeting that was loud and that was very charismatic. And if there wasn't anyone and I was going, then I would try to be that person. And that was very unnatural for me. I'm not, I'm, you know, pretty shy person, but it was a very useful skill that I developed is how to like make fun of myself and be loud and, you know, make people have fun and stuff like that. Huge, uh, huge skill for life and also helped my chapter quite a bit. So even if you can't pull off a committee or something like that, just try to you know, make sure each event that you do, go for quality over quantity, make sure it's gonna be a really good event that people are gonna enjoy and people are gonna be hungry for more, hopefully.